G'day, Starlo here. Most of us who love our fishing really enjoy bringing home a feed of fresh seafood, but a lot of us also choose to let go a great deal of what we catch. Sometimes we don't have any choice. Fish that fall outside the legal limits, protected species, and those caught out of season must be returned to the water as quickly as possible. But many anglers also choose to release fish that we could legally keep, especially important breeders and slow growing species. Which means that we need to know how to maximise the survival opportunities of those fish we let go. The good news is that research consistently shows most fish survive after being let go and that catch and release is an effective tool for managing and conserving fish stocks. But we can always do a little bit better and that's why I want to share some tips with you to maximise the survival of every fish you let go. Firstly, we need to do our best to avoid deeply hooking fish hand holding your line, using lures or flies instead of baits, and choosing non-offset circle hooks when bait fishing are all great ways to help ensure fish are mouth or lip hooked, thereby dramatically improving their survival rates. Squeezing down or flattening the barbs on your hooks is also a big help, not to mention being safer for you. Replacing treble hooks on lures with single hooks allows for better hook holds and also minimises damage to the fish and its time out of the water. We also need to use tackle that's suited to the targets we're chasing in order to reduce the amount of time it takes to land the fish. This reduces bust-offs too, meaning less fish trailing lost tackle around, which clearly isn't good for them. Using a fish-friendly knotless landing net is also important. This helps to minimise damage to the fish's eyes, fins and protective slime coating, as well as reducing the incidence of hooks tangling in mesh netting, all of which can help speed up the release process. Remember, fish can't breathe in air, so the less time they spend out of the water, the better. Use long-nosed pliers or a hook removal device to quickly and safely remove the hook if you can. On those rare occasions when you can't easily get to the hook, simply cut the line or leader as close as possible to the fish's mouth and leave the hook in place. Often the fish will get rid of it after a short time. To further reduce damage to the mucous outer skin layer that covers the fish's scales, always wet your hands or gloves before touching a fish and do the same with anything you intend laying the fish on including measuring mats. Avoid placing fish on hot, dry, rough or sharp surfaces and always support the fish's weight. Never hang it up by its jaws, gills or tail. Avoid gripping it too tightly or standing on it to remove the hooks too. Such practices can lead to damage to the fish's skeleton and may cause bruising impacting its health. If the fish has been pulled from deep water and shows signs of pressure related barotrauma, you may need to use a release weight to take it back down to the level where it was hooked. If you want to take a photo or measure the fish, keep it in the water in your landing net while you get everything ready. Remember, time out of the water is critical. If you have to keep fish in a live well, it's best to use one that has a flow through system and ensure the water is circulating properly. Don't overcrowd your live well and minimise the time you keep fish in there. When it comes to actually releasing the unhooked fish, lower it gently into the water. Don't spear it or throw it in. Support the fish facing into any flow or current. If you need to swim it, do so in a figure of eight fashion, not by pushing it back and forth, as fish can't breathe properly when they're moving backwards. And when it's ready to go, simply release your grip and let the fish swim away. <laughs> what a great feeling. Tight lines. Mm -hmm.